Who's ready for a contest? It's that time again. In fact, this contest is going to run all the way up until Thanksgiving, where you're looking at November 1st through November 17th. The deadline is November 18th. You need to join the podcast contest by the 18th to get put in. I don't care if you are a practitioner or not. All you have to do is leave a review on the podcast, subscribe to it, and then tell us you did that with the form inside the show notes below. I would love it if you also share it on social media too. That's a big help for us to reach other ears so more people can learn from this podcast just as you are doing. So once again, to get inside the podcast contest, you need to subscribe to it if you already haven't, leave a review, and then check the link in the show notes and that will tell you how to give us your information so we know you did it and then also for us to reach out to you. Now here are the winners. Out of everybody, we're gonna give away not five, not 10, but 15 signed copies of my book. From anybody who joins, we will be drawing 15 names. So you're gonna need to leave your name, your email address, and your shipping address inside that contact information on our form below. You can find that form in the show notes. If you are a practitioner, you have a special grand prize available to you. Our next and final Master Bloodwork live event, like final as in possibly ever, final live event, is on December 13th. It is a Tuesday. Now there's going to be something special with this. We're going to do the live event where I teach you all of the blood work in four and a half hours on December 13th from 1 to 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Set your date aside, mark your calendars, block off your schedule, no patience during that time. Same time next day, December 14th. We're going to spend it two hours on a special Q&A session at the same time. Then we'll take a 30 minute break. And then we're going to do something special, which I've never done before and I'm excited to do. We are going to together map out our 2023 plan. December 14th, that second two hour session. So December 13th and December 14th from 1 to 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Block off the date. There will be one grand prize winner from this podcast contest who will get to join for free. It'll probably be... 1200 bucks because of the brand new portion, which I'm excited about. You're going to get that just like the regular, regular price of this master blood work event. And again, this is the last time it's being ran live. So come join us December 13th and 14th block off the date. You'll get the registration link soon until then join the podcast contest. Let's make sure more ears can hear this and just You never know. Maybe you will be the grand prize winner. Maybe a book, a signed copy of my book will show up on your doorstep. If you haven't grabbed my book yet, go grab it. It's on Amazon. Why are my labs normal? Is the title. It'll teach you everything you need to know about blood work and more. All right. If you haven't started using or are using systemic formulas, you need to. Don't get their supplements from Amazon. They are counterfeit, as are many other of this quality. Grab them at systemicformulas.com and check out mybiome.com, M-Y-B-Y-O-M-E. And let's get this party started. Welcome to the Beyond the Diagnosis podcast with me, Dr. Kylie. I have one of my very special favorite friends and uh, we've met one time, so we can call each other friends, but we work a lot together as, as Jen comes in the 90 day program with me and does mindset and business coaching calls with us every Tuesday inside that program. And so I want to talk today, and she wants to talk today about shiny object syndrome, which is me, myself, and I. I see something, I'm like, oh, wait, I could create something like that. How would I do it? Um, But it's not always the wisest thing to do, especially when your credit card is maxed out and you're like, I would have to spend more money on building another face or another landing page. So Jen, can you kind of like stop this madness in my head? Let's do it. Oh my gosh. Shiny object syndrome is 
this thing I, that I have seen over and over and over again throughout the years um, in my coaching career. Um, and let's just talk a little bit about, you know, what it costs someone to have shiny object syndrome. The cost is high. It's a high financial cost because you're kind of going from thing to thing to thing. Um, emotionally and mentally, the cost is very high um, because what happens when you're going from thing to thing to thing, you're not allowing yourself the process to let it work. And so then you start to lose some confidence. You start to feel confused about what am I really doing? Why am I doing this? Why isn't it working? You have like increased amount of failures because you're just going from thing to thing to thing and not giving it the process that it needs and not giving yourself the process of working through the emotional junk that always comes up when we do something new, especially as entrepreneurs. Um, and then it, the, the disappointment and that then it comes with this story of, well, nothing's working. Why does why don't things work with me? And I tell my clients all the time, it's not the program. You know, it's what's happening inside of your head. So just let's talk, like, let's just clarify what shiny object syndrome is. And what it is, is like when you're going from program to program to program, or from coach to coach to coach, trying to find that like one magical thing that's going to fix everything. But what happens is it's, distracting you from really going deep inside yourself, really t taking time to be still, taking time to be strategic, but also taking the time to like face what comes up when you start a new thing. And it's not a bad thing that resistance comes up and fear comes up and self-doubt comes up. It's when we when we get distracted by the next thing that keeps us from really looking at that and resolving it, that's kind of what keeps us in the shiny object syndrome is not looking at what's coming up. So um, when we're talking about shiny object syndrome, we want to look at the deeper roots and beliefs that keep us in this pattern of going from thing to thing to thing. So just because you, you were saying that you're str you struggle with this. Well, I'm bad. Um, <laughs> my husband knows it. My assistant knows it. Like I'm bad. <laughs> He's always like, are you going to ever do one thing longer than once? And like, I feel like now I've got my foundation laid. I have the 90 day program. I have the master life blood work live events. I have a brand new mastermind. So I have the, the foundation laid. But then I like I get inside my my mastermind groups that I'm in separate from the mastermind I host, and they're like, "Hey, I just sold a three uh, a twelve week intensive or a, a four week intensive or a three day intensive." And I'm like, "Hmm, I don't have an intensive. What could I do to create some type of intensive?" Or you see like the Facebook posts and someone, or not post but ad, um, and someone says they they have their magic answer, you know, it's like, Oh, wait, well, maybe I should do what they're doing. And it just there's so much out there, you can get lost in the possibilities. Yeah, that's to me, shiny object syndrome, like I see something I'm like, Oh, I, I could do that. Oh, I could do that too. Oh, maybe I should do this. Yeah. Yeah. And what so what happens then is you become like, super scattered. You're trying to do, you've got your hands in too many things and then not you personally, but like in general, oh, I like am. we get, we <laughs> <That's me too. laughs> want to call you out on your podcast. <laughs> That's what this is for. <laughs> okay. Um, you, we get our hands in so many things that then nothing really is working great, right? Because really great things, really great programs they take some time 
You need to see what's happening, what's going on with your clients. Are people re-signing up? Are they not? How can you tweak it to make it better? Like, it's like, um, you know, the process of growing a garden. You don't just throw seeds in and it pops up beautiful, right? You have to nurture it. You have to take time with it. You have to water it and make sure it gets the sunlight and pull the weeds out. Um, and the weeds, if we're using the garden analogy, the weeds are our negative thought programs and our negative, our discouragement and our wanting to give up moments and um, the the deeper beliefs of, well, am I really worthy of this much success? Do people really want me? Um, do Is my message making a difference? Like there's so many of those like weeds that can get in. Um, and what people tend to do is like, well, I don't want to do the weeding. Weeding isn't fun, right? Like remember as a kid, my mom would have these huge gardens and in Indiana where it was humid, we have to get up at, you know, early in the morning before it got too hot and go pull the weeds and nobody likes weeding, <laughs> nobody, <laughs> but, um, it's a necessary process, um, especially, you know, on an emotional level, if you want to have, you know, a, a level of success that, you know, feels really meaningful and rewarding and success is money, but it's also, what am I providing my clients? What am I, you know, how well am I taking care of my customers? Um, you know, it, it has like so many components to it, success does. So um, allowing ourselves to be in the process and get like, for example, you know, you've got your 90 day program, like you've been, you've done several rounds of it. You understand how it works. You understand how to bring people in, how, what the messaging is. Um, you, you, and you, and I've watched you, you've done tweaks along the way you know, to make that a better and better and better experience for people. And so, um, so it's like, once you get one program kind of really like nailed down, really like working beautifully, then, you know, it, you can go on to, you know, another program. But what I do is like, when I have ideas, I just keep like an ideas little notebook and be like, oh, three-day intensive, that sounds interesting. I'm going to look at that, you know, at, in the future when I feel inspired to look at that again. Um, you don't want to discount the excitement that you feel for things because that may be divine inspiration, right? Like, but trying to do everything all at once um, creates more chaos and, um, and a disconnect from what's going on inside of you. So as you were talking um, a minute ago, I, I wrote down a couple things like shiny object syndrome can be a way that we like prove ourselves, especially where, when we're in masterminds, when, lo when people are doing all these things and they're sharing their best moments, right? <laughs> they're not telling you how many no's they got before the win. They're not telling you how many times they wanted to quit their business before they posted, I got this success. Um, and so we kind of get caught up in this comparison and I've got to keep up and I've got to prove that I'm a, you know, I'm a great entrepreneur and I know what I'm doing by like doing lots of stuff. But that's, you know, that creates a lot of disconnect and chaos and um, and it disconnects you from, it can disconnect you from your people too. Not only from yourself, but from the people you're trying to help and serve and um, help become successful. So that's a good point um, to make though, too, is when you're, when you're seeing even social media, whether you're in a mastermind or not, and I, and I hope and pray that this is my mastermind is different than this because they can be toxic. You can just see the wins that everybody's making. I know I've posted things like, hey, I had a six-figure month. And they're like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? You know, kind of thing. But they didn't see the two years of failures before that. 
they just saw this fruit dangling up there that's like, whoa, look what I just did. And I'm, I've experienced it the same way. I had to leave one because it was so toxic for me. I'm now back in it because I've had a major mindset shift. But just be remember that when you see people posting on social media, which is why I love this podcast too and why I want to get more into, look, this is my day one of the workshops that I hosted. Nobody got on them. I drove clear to Southern Utah, five, five hours away, hosted a workshop and one person showed up and she wasn't even there for herself. She was there for her daughter. So you don't see those moments. You just now it's like I get on a workshop and there's 55 people on there um, on Zoom. Right. But just remember right. that your chapter one is different than their someone else's chapter 18. Right. And I think that's, um, I'm, I'm really glad you brought up, like everyone was like, Oh, what did you do? Um, I think a, a really great question would be, who did you have to become? Yes. What did you have to overcome yes. in order to get to that? You know, because, you know, you, you do your inner work. A you can't have those big successes without facing your money fears, facing your self-confidence fears, facing your, am I worthy, you know, head talk. Um, you, you can't have those kinds of successes without doing the deeper inner work. Um, let me, let me give you an I, example of this, Jen. So I'm not just hangling like, Hey, I have this hundred thousand dollar month, you know, a couple months ago. Right now, right before we got on this podcast to record it, I looked at my numbers. I'm going to be open with my numbers. My bank account is $652 right now. My credit card is $52,000 and some odd cents. $52,000 credit card with like nothing in the bank, right? So to sit here and see the numbers like that and realize this is just a moment I'm in this moment's going to change. I had to do the inner work to get there. I had to be calm. I used to avoid looking at my bank account. It was like a plague to me. My husband would ask me where, how much we were sitting in there. I had no idea. I would like beat around the bush for two years, two years of this running a business. I didn't want to see, I didn't want to look, I didn't want to talk about money. And now it's like my favorite thing to talk about. I want people to know that, Whatever you're sitting at now, it's just a moment in time. It's going to change. I'm crossing my fingers and calling in all the energy that it's going to change next week because I got big credit card bill to pay. <laughs> but just so you know, I'm not just dangling up. Oh, I had this huge month and I've had some really good months since then. Not as big, but I w there's also other things that come with it. So you, when you do this inner work and you work on changing your money narrative, you work on what is it, what is my calling to do rather than chasing someone else's what's working for them? What, what's going to work for you? What feels right for you? And then run with what feels right to you personally, because you can't sell something unless you are all in. And that's what it changed for me is I'm really, I love working with practitioners and helping out my colleagues. So to me, for to sell something to them, invite them into these opportunities, it's easy. It's natural. That's what I love to do. So make sure if, if you, when you guys see these Facebook ads and when you see social media um, and all sorts of other stuff, remember what's right for you and don't chase the shiny objects. And like I said, don't just listen to what we are dangling out there, whether it be a mastermind group or whether it be a Facebook post or friends or a conference you're attending when you're all talking about the good stuff and you're really like, Oh, I better not tell about my bank account because I'm only at 2,500 when my buddy sitting next to me at dinner is at 25,000. You know, we've all been there in that boat and it's just a matter of what time are you in at this current moment? Yeah. Um, one of the things that I, I heard when you were talking, um, to is a couple things like your intention of being peaceful. That's a, that's huge, right? When we're in that shiny object syndrome pattern, we're not peaceful. We're chasing. We're anxious. We're um, we're 
you know, we've got that anxiety of like, how am I going to get that that bank account paid up or filled up the bank card paid off or whatever. So like being peaceful is a huge part of it. So let's just for our audience, because I'm feeling some energy that, um, you know, needs to release. Uh, let's have everyone take a nice deep breath. And think about something that you're anxious about, something that you've been chasing, something that you're worried about. Um, and take a breath and let's have that intention of just releasing whatever like false belief that you learned in your childhood about not being enough, not being worthy, life being hard, money being hard. Um just whatever that is for you as a root, just take a breath and let's release the energy of that. It doesn't have to sit there anymore in your, your garden, so to speak, of what you're creating. Nice big breaths. And the goal here as we release those roots is to get to deeper and deeper levels of inner peace. And the more peaceful you are, the, the easier things work out and the quicker things work out. Um, when you're trying to like get money or, um, and, and you're in a rush or you're anxious about it, it that repels money. That repels people. Um, you're just shooting yourself in the foot when you're anxious about it. So <clears throat> take a nice deep breath and let's connect everybody to like feeling that like deeper inner peace that you've ever, that you've ever felt before. And if you, I want to give another question because you kind of mentioned this, I think before it popped into my mind anyway, while you were talking was like, if you notice yourself in that shiny objects syndrome, chasing the next thing, um, ask yourself, you know, what am I avoiding? And it could be things like, well, if I'm starting something new, I'm avoiding, you know, failure or I'm avoiding someone's judgment or I'm avoiding uh, facing my fear of uh, rejection. Because if I'm always working on the next thing, you never get to that space of, okay, come on into my space. Here's what I have to offer. Um, so take a nice deep breath on that. And it, and it could even be deeper, deeper roots than that. Like I'm avoiding um, feeling ashamed or I'm avoiding feeling um, not good enough. I'm avoiding, you know, it's like there's some, maybe I'm avoiding facing some trauma of past failures or of someone's words that told you, you, you would never make it. Okay, so take a nice deep breath on that because I, I can feel there's some stuff surfacing there. And let's just um, connect everyone to, you know, it's safe to face myself. And also, um, it's safe to ask for help and support. I was talking to um, well, a colleague of mine um, who is, a, is a, also a coach. She's in the hospital. And I just felt inspired, like, I'm, can I do some, you know, clearing for you? And so she was like, yes, please. And I did a little session for her, told her what came up. And she's like, oh, you know, I could feel that there were some things there, but I couldn't get to them myself. You know, so sometimes we can release stuff on our own. But what I find with myself and with 
everyone that I work with is like, you know, something's there, but because it's your stuff and it's your own perspective, trying to find what's wrong or find what needs to heal or find the root, it, you can't always see it. So having that outside support is going to help you through the, the, the work of facing yourself, the, the process, the experience, and it can be really joyful. It can be so joyful. Um, um, Do you have a couple more anyway. affirmations we can finish up with? Yes, I do. Um, one of the first things that came up as I was um, thinking about everyone on this call today is I am connected to my soul calling. Okay, when you're connected to that, it's like you're connected to this deeper part of you that will guide you in peace and confidence. Okay, the next one is I am connected to my divine path. Okay, our divine paths are not without bumps in the road. That's just our life experience. But the, the key is, is to not uh, jump off of your divine path because there's a bump in the road. Don't go looking for another path. Your path is yours. So face the bumps in the road that might be facing fear, healing from past traumas, healing your mindset, like those are the, usually the bumps in the road. Um, stay, just get the support you need with that to, so you can stay on your divine path. The next one is, um, I am connected to the wisdom of my soul. So everyone take a nice big breath on that because that feels... I just want you to just breathe that in. When you're really connected to the wisdom of your soul, that's where you um, have high awareness, high peace. Um, you, you can move forward without chasing and pushing and trying to control things. You're just, you're just moving forward with peace and confidence and grace. And then the next one is I have discernment. Okay. So this is a really important one. And this, this gets more clear and more powerful as you're doing your healing work. So you can discern, am I in shiny object syndrome or am I getting a divine nudge? You know, am I avoiding something or am I like ready to take on the next thing and, 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 you know, start the process. So discernment is super important in just, well, in every aspect of our lives, but being, having an awareness of, okay, am I in shiny object syndrome or not? So those are the affirmations that, yeah, take some nice deep breaths on that. I love that final one. I've never heard you say that one before. I have discernment. So just as a quick recap for the, these affirmations, guys, mm -hmm. one of them or multiple of them resonate with you, write them down, plaster them on your bathroom mirror, whatever you need to do. If you go around my house, they are all over the place. It's safe to face myself. It's safe to ask for help and support. I am connected to my soul calling. I am connected to my divine path. I am connected to with the wisdom of my soul. I have discernment. Just can I just clarify one thing about the affirmations? How how I use affirmations in my work is that these are actually replacing old belief systems that we cleared earlier on, you know, throughout our conversation, these are already working in your subconscious. It's the subconscious brain that drives us to shiny, shiny object, object syndrome, to avoid facing ourselves, to avoid, you know, um, listening to our soul and following our heart. So the affirmations are actually already starting to work 
and support your subconscious in um, having more peace and being more confident in yourself and being able to discern like it's it's already starting to work. And at first, when I first started doing affirmations, they were just words on a piece of paper. And if there were just words on a piece of paper, that's okay. Start there. You only need to believe more than you don't. So you need to believe 51% of, the, of it, not 100%. So just start with what feels good for you. Start somewhere, but just start. And retrain your brain. That's what we're here for. All right, Jen, where can they find you? Um, I am on Instagram at Jen Polson. And also my website is just a simple jenpolson.com. Um, I would love to have a free consult with anyone who has questions, wants to talk about the possibility of what coaching, how coaching would help them. I also have a um, program right now called the Weekly Energy Balance. So you get a video or an audio recording of like a mini session and you get, you can listen to it whenever you want to. And it's sent out every Monday morning and it's a great way for busy entrepreneurs to get the inner work experience with, with your busy schedule. Cause you can listen to it on your own time. So if you have questions, please feel free email me on my website. That's Jen Paulson, P-O-U-L-S-O-N. And like I said, she joins us every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern inside the 90-day program where you can become a functional blood work specialist. All right, that's a wrap. See you guys next time. November 18th, that's the day the podcast contest ends. You need to join it. To join that podcast, this podcast contest, all you have to do is subscribe to the podcast and leave a review. And then jump over to the link in the show notes and let us know you did that by sharing some information. There will be 15 people who will get a signed copy of my book headed to them in, at their house and one grand prize winner who will be a practitioner who can come join our final Master Bloodwork live event on December 13th with a twist this time on December 14th. So block out the dates 1 to 5 30 p.m. Eastern both days. We'll do all the blood work on the 13th. We'll have a Q&A on the 14th and then we're going to sit down for two hours together and map out our plan for 2023. It's going to be powerful. Nine hours total. Come join me December 13th and December 14th. One grand prize winner. Everybody else you can still come. Let's do this. Why? We're in this together. If you haven't started using a the supplement company systemic formulas and my biome in your practice, you need to. If you're someone who just wants to take incredible supplements, these are your things. In fact, I only recommend the best because you're wasting money if you're not. Usually they're junk and you're not going to get anywhere if they're not really good quality supplements. Systemic Formulas and My Biome will give you everything you need. Go visit their website at systemicformulas.com and My Biome, M Y B Y O M E. Visit their website. If you are a practitioner, come join me inside their private Facebook group for practitioners called Systemic Formulas Clinical Nutrition. And don't forget, In This Together Live with me is happening February 20th, 21st, and 22nd of next year in Orlando, Florida. You can now register, get the special early bird pricing and get the link to do that below. And I'll see you live and in person. And I'll probably give you the biggest hug in the world. February 20th, 21st and 22nd, Orlando, Florida. See you in a few months.